Nick Dixon, do you think that uh, we should talk about the NHS and have a look at how it works and think again about the, uh, the uh, mechanism by which it's run? Yeah, absolutely. I thought it was very funny and provocative when uh, Yaron said that the uh, uh, American health system is too socialist. Because, of course, our fear in this country is that we'll go to an American system, which basically means people dying in the streets in our minds. Because here, of course, we're obsessed with the NHS. It's become a religion. There's a certain cognitive dissonance because at the same time we'll say Germany's dealt with the pandemic better, but our NHS is the greatest thing in the world, which it clearly isn't. Everyone's talking about massive waiting lists and so on. We obviously know it's broken, but we can't really admit it. And it's interesting to hear uh, Yaron talk about the US system because that is held up as the, the thing we should all be afraid of, as if we're going to radically privatise. And the big problem here is, of course, getting elected on any kind of platform that's saying we're going to do make any kind of change to the NHS, we're going to make it more private. But I agree with you, Ron, it would work much better if we did that. I mean, I made a joke recently on one of these shows about um, the police. I was saying, what if we had a police force that worked a bit more like Uber, where they actually could come to your house in a few minutes if you were burgled, rather than never coming? And so, and, it's, and probably Yaron would even agree with that as a serious idea, maybe, that we could actually have a private police force of some sort. So I'm totally with him. We need to radically privatise the NHS, in some, not radically, but perhaps some insurance-based system, perhaps something new, perhaps we could look at Switzerland. We need to look at new ideas for it, definitely. Uh, Lisa Mason, do you trust private enterprise with our health? Oh, it's a very difficult one. I've recently had a little bit of a to do with the NHS myself, trying to get an appointment for my daughter, and they sent me one for next year. So um, having to pay out for a solution myself um, is something I didn't expect to be doing, um, especially but with all the financial crunching I'm having to do this year as well. Um, and I think uh, there are pros and cons to it. Um, finding a solution today is not something that's going to happen. But I think, you know, everyone's made some great points with, you know, what what could work, privatising it and what wouldn't. So. Were, you, were you told, Lisa, by the NHS that your daughter's treatment was not urgent? Uh, basically, yeah. Um, I asked for, uh, they said they'd send me for a paediatric appointment and I was sent one for the 3rd of March next year. And of course, to you, it was urgent. And now you're actually going to have to splash the cash and pay for it yourself. I wonder, Connor, whether the NHS will be privatised by default with people not using the service anymore and getting their credit out and going private. Well, nobody can afford to because you're forced by law to pay for it through national insurance, which has just gone up. And they can float this bull about, oh, 70 percent of households will see a benefit when the national insurance rise threshold is raised. But if all the rich people just, you know, start going abroad because we're no longer a tax haven in the future and we don't attract investment, then what happens? Well, the bracket comes down. We start paying for everything through the nose again. And the people on the NHS front lines know this. I mean, I went for an allergy test and a blood test today and I had a chat with a nurse and I said about waiting list on waiting to be diagnosed for something else. And I said, uh, oh, it's 18 months. And then they rang me six months later and said, oh, we lost the paperwork. It's another 18 months. And we joked about it. And I said, huh, there's COVID for you. And the NHS doctor turned around and said, no, that's the NHS for you. So they're full aware of the failures of the system and they're suffering because... They see patients, you know, waiting on lists and dying in front of them. And we're suffering because we can't pay for this system in its current form. We're being forced to by point of law. If we refuse to pay for it, we get sent to prison. And the private option, due to the fact the government controls health care, is way too costly.